Okay, so first things first, let's open the file. File, open. And select crane.jpg. I found that this works best on images with high contrast. Dramatic images with um, lots of highlights and shadows. This one was taken with my trusty A6000 and just the kit lens, the 16 to 50. And these are the new student accommodations at the Coventry University just being built. I took this last year. I just happened to be passing and noticed what a great image it would be. So I went back with my camera. This image didn't need much processing. I just um, raised the shadows and decreased the highlights, I think, and uh, added a little vignette. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to duplicate the layers. So right click on the background layer and duplicate. Or you can duplicate by holding Control and pressing J. Now we're going to apply our first filter, which is filter and noise and add noise, like so. Make sure the intensity is at 100%. Gaussian Blur is selected from the list. Make sure Monochromatic is set as light rays tend not to be multicolored. The next filter we're going to apply will be to create the actual rays. So we select Filters and Blur and Zoom Blur. I already had mine set at the maximum value. That's why you saw the, uh, the rays at the start. You saw the uh, Zoom Blur effect in action there. Using the slider you can't actually set the value to anything over 100 but you can type in larger values into the box. The maximum is 1024 so if we type in 1024 and hit apply and then wait for it to apply the zoom blur filter this will take a while so I'm going to speed it up. And done. Okay, that's our zoom blur applied. So we have our zoom blur done, which is the base for our light rays. Now we just need to make the lighter parts lighter and the darker parts darker so that they stand out better against the backdrop. Okay, so go to adjustments and levels. And we want to bring the black level up to just where the color information starts and bring the white level down to just where the color information ends. So our tones are spanning the whole luminance range from black to white. Let's get rid of that. And now I want to create more impact in the rays themselves and create more separation between the rays just so that the final rays can have as much impact as I'd like and then I can adjust them later on to match the background. I'll add a light filter, clarity filter and set the radius to maximum. Instantly we can see that the clarity has slightly sharpened the rays. So click the little X to get rid of it now I'm going to sharpen them even more. So right click and duplicate the clarity filter and right click and duplicate again. So as you can see our rays are very very defined, nice and sharp, just what I need. So as we don't need these adjustments anymore we're going to create a merged layer of the work that we've done so far to speed up the next steps. So right click on the top layer and select Merge Visible. And then wait for a long time. This really does take a while, so I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so now we have a merged pixel layer. We no longer require all of the previous adjustments or our original zoomed layer. Select the second layer down and then the second layer from the bottom while holding shift and hit delete and that gets rid of them. Right now for the fun stuff 
let's set the blend mode for our race so that we can see it against the scenery underneath. Select our pixel layer, our newly merged pixel layer, and then select one of the blend modes. Now you could choose from a number of these modes and different modes would give you different effects. Screen is quite dramatic. Color dodge, well, uh, fantastic. Add or overlay. Overlay is really dramatic. Or oh, soft light. Uh, soft light's um, a bit like overlay, but with less impact. Then pin light or linear light. The different modes would work with different scenes, especially when set at different opacities. But this time I'm going to select the light and filter because I know it works for this scene. Okay, so now I want to move the location of the source of the burst of light rays so that it is uh, positioned at the center of the sun. Just select our move tool and move the rays into position at the center of the sun. Then holding control and using the mouse wheel to zoom out so we can see the whole thing. I'll grab the corner of the box and holding control pull out to extend the rays. Then just rotate the rays using this little handle until I think I have something that will look quite nice. I think that looks pretty good. I'll press control and zero to make the image fill the view. Now obviously it's far too bright so making sure our pixel layer is selected we can use the slider to bring down the opacity to something which is more realistic. Say about there. At the moment the image is far too bright overall. Because of the light and blend mode we have a washed out light image. So I'll add an adjustment, a brightness and contrast adjustment and I'm going to reduce the brightness and increase the contrast to make the most of our effect. Just a little tweak on the brightness about there. That's fine. Very nice. Now we have a whole bunch of rays coming from the center of the sun. Though it does look a little odd with the rays coming from infinity. I need to hide it with a blob of light. Right here, add a light source. So, I'll add a new pixel layer. After I've selected my brightness contrast layer, that is. Here we go. Now I'll select my paintbrush. Make sure opacity is 100. Hardness is set at 0. And my flow is 100. And I have white selected. Next, increase my brush size by holding Alt both mouse buttons and moving right. Then I'll place it where I need it, which I think is around there. Making sure that I've got it right in the center of where I think the sun is. Um, once I think I'm in position, just press the left mouse button to place the blob of sunlight. Okay, that's quite good, but not quite perfect yet. So I just shrink my brush down and add a little bit more in the center. There we go. So now we have a nice light source and the rays are starting to look a little more realistic. Right, just shrink my brush down even more. And then I'm going to add some white around the edges of the buildings just to make it look like the light is bleeding through the edges of the buildings. There we go. I think that's pretty good. I think that's realistic enough. Yep, um, that'll do for now. Looking pretty nice. Then I'm going to do something about these rays. They look a little too sharp and harsh, a bit unrealistic. So what I'm going to do is go to the pixel layer we created earlier and select filters, blur and Gaussian blur. Then just bring the radius down to zero 
and then increase radius bit by bit until I think the light rays look realistic. See here they're not sharp, they look like nice soft, soft shafts of light blasting from behind the buildings. Good. Okay, next I want to reduce the effect of the rays in the corners. These areas here. Select the hand tool because they just seem to be a little too pronounced at the edges too strong. So to achieve this I'm going to select my pixel layer and create a vignette filter. Make sure it's attached to my pixel layer so it only affects the rays and not the underlying image. Bring the exposure right down. Bring the hardness down to quite low and then expand the vignette so you can see it's had the effect of erasing the rays in the corners but gradually which is exactly what I'm after so get rid of that but now I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool again and select black increase my brush size and paint over the bottom of the image to bring the rays back a little bit more down in the corners by the buildings just increase them a bit here and a bit down the bottom area there and a little more over in this corner especially over that building so there we go as you can see that's had the effect of bringing it back in the bottom corners but leaving them erased in the top corners okay so far so good it's starting to look quite effective now I do think the effect is just a tad bright here so I'll just go to my top pixel layer where I drew the light source, the light blob and the uh, little light bleeds on the buildings. I think I'll reduce the opacity by just a tad. I think that's enough. Yeah, I think that is just a little bit more realistic. There we go. In just a few steps we have quite effective light rays. But we're not finished yet. Even though this is a nice picture it looks really lovely in black and white. Just for fun and to see what it looks like I'm going to add a little colour. So with my top layer selected go to adjustments and select colour balance. From the drop down list select shadows. Move the cyan red slider towards cyan like so, about that much. Then in the highlights, I'm going to add red, actually, uh, lots of red. Then a whole bunch of yellow. I think I'll reduce that red a little. It's a bit too red. I think that looks pretty nice, but let's just go back to those shadows again and add a little blue to that cyan, make it more bluey teal. The sky is never really that much teal, so more bluey teal would, I think, fit. Okay then, let's use the blend ranges adjustment of the color balance tool just to reduce the blue in the very dark areas. So select blend ranges, move the panel out of the way so that I can see, put a point in the middle and then drag the blacks down and as you can see when I do the very dark areas become less blue. You see the very dark areas like just here become less saturated. More blue, less blue which just makes it look less washed out, more dramatic. Let's see what happens if I do it in the highlights too. Now you can see our very bright areas are becoming less pink but I actually think it works with the pink so I'm going to leave that where it is. Yeah, I think them pink highlights actually look pretty good. Let's have a quick look and try linear on and off. Yep, having linear off is tending to increase the definition slightly between the blacks and the dark colours. So, now we have a splash of colour. Very nice. 
Right, let's just take a quick look at the before and after. Here we go. Before and after. Before and after. And before and after. I think that is pretty effective to tell you the truth. Now let's have a quick run through on a colour image as there is a slight addition to the process. Here we are, let's use this image, my door of doom from a previous tutorial. First of all, right click and duplicate, then filters and noise, add noise. Okay, we're already at 100 and Gaussian and monochromatic, so that's all fine. Okay, apply. So, filters and blur and zoom blur. As we're already at 1024, there's no point changing it, so just apply. Okay, that's done. So now we're ready to enhance the rays. So add our levels adjustment. Bring the black up and bring the white all the way down. And done. And next, we're going to add our clarity. So adjustments, no, no, not adjustments, filters and clarity and maximum. Okay. Right click and duplicate, right click and duplicate. So now we have our clarity and that's very nice indeed. So, okay. So next I'm going to add a black and white adjustment as light rays are not multicolored. And this is the extra step I mentioned earlier. Right click on the top layer and merge visible, then wait quite a while. But like magic, done. So delete our in between layers. Pick the blend mode for our light rays. Just to show you that you can, I think I'll choose something different. Maybe linear or vivid or hard. No, I'm going for linear linear light this time. It will affect the overall look of the light rays differently. Blur our layer, make sure it's selected, then filters, blur and Gaussian blur. Maybe not that much. And up a bit. Fine. Now they're not quite as sharp as they were. Move the light source into the center of the doorway, like so. Make it uh, bigger, so hold control and drag it out, like so. And grab the handle like so and rotate until they're in a position that I think will look nice. Control zero for a full view. Reduce the opacity of the light rays until I think they look Nice, about there is fine. Now to fill in the door, so create a pixel layer like so and get a white brush, make sure it's white. Shrink the brush down to a manageable size and start just drawing in the light source in the door so it doesn't look like the light is coming from darkness. Then uh, reduce the opacity quite a bit and draw in some light bleed around the edge of the doorway. Okay, I think we're nearly there. Let's go to our pixel layer and we're going to use the vignette filter to reduce the effect of the light rays at the edge of the screen, so bring down our exposure, bring down the hardness, and increase the size. Increase the hardness just a tad more to about there, and tweak the size. Make sure this vignette filter is on the light ray layer. So hardness down and up with size like so, done. 
Now we have the Door of Doom with the light rays blasting through it. Nice. Let's have a quick look at our work. So, before, after, before, after, before, and after. This really is a very versatile and dramatic effect. 